putting this particular story of wasted screen time extremely short, Sage gets a new trinket, one that fits her sensibilities, and we return back to the tea room for another round of sitting around. Look at you! So cool, Sage! You've forged a connection with this one. It's lovely to see it happen. I feel... Odd. What's wrong, Tiger? I... I didn't want to tear a sphere. But I didn't know how to tell you. Mom would be so angry. She despises new magic. She doesn't want me to use it. At the store, before, I wanted to give it back. Then, I found this. And it's... I don't know. It feels like... Like something I'm supposed to have. Like it's made for me. But we're star-crossed. I don't know what to do, and now I'm yelling. And I hate yelling! Acting. And pouring more drivel to the pile, it is implied that Terra Spheres have some kind of consciousness. How exactly does an orb of magical energy form a connection with their wielder? Does that mean that no one else except the bonded wielder can use them effectively? If that's the case, then why would the diverse couple buy Sage a random Terra Sphere behind her back? That is the most inconsiderate gift anyone could ever give. If the Terra Sphere has to feel just right in order for someone to be an effective user of new magic, then Sage should have been there to pick out her trinket the first time around. And furthermore, if there is an element of compatibility between the orbs and the user, then every Terra Sphere should be crafted to order. There should be some kind of expert, taking magical measurements or whatever bullshit, like a tailor making a suit, and then creating a Terra Sphere that is made specifically to the customer's needs. But hold on, this notion of forming a bond is directly contradictory to what we learn in episode 5, where it is stated that Terra Spheres can quote, run out of juice, and need to be replaced. The fuck is this? Are you saying you need to form a spiritual bond with literal batteries with limited lifespans? That is insane. Has the teacher formed a connection with all of her wands? Is she a magic slut? See, the show pretends like there is something deeper and mystical at present, but all that really happens is a spoiled kid taking their birthday Lamborghini back to the dealership because she didn't like the color. Everyone at school makes fun of me or laughs behind my back because of my old sigils and my stupid hat. What are you talking about? No one laughs behind your back. Everyone at the academy is either a rando with no presence, life, or opinion on anything, either that, or they are within your friend circle and constantly validate you. The only one who pesters you is Amaryllis, and she does that to your face. Seriously, the one person who bullies and torments Sage is the most ineffective lame-ass bully in all of fiction, and Sage is losing her shit over it. Fuck you, Sage. Honestly, grow up. And as for Sage's anxiety about her mother, not to worry, the diverse couple handles that lickety split. We're so sorry. Yeah, dude, we didn't want to freak you out. We just wanted to help you with this huge, crazy shift. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I'm not mad at you. I could never be mad at you. And look, if your mom gets mad, we'll take the fall. Bad influences and all that. A bit hypocritical of her, though. <laughs> Why? Well, I mean, your mom wasn't always so conservative. Hold on. Anise, sweetheart. What? The kid deserves to know. Look at her. If she gets any more anxious, she'll combust. Fair. So, when I was little, growing up in witch country, your mom went through a phase where she really dug new magic. I looked up to her because of it. She was a badass. After a few years, she stopped using it and went back to her roots. But she pretends that she never deviated, even a little. And that's not fair to you. <sighs> I know, right? A 
Terrasphere. You can do whatever the fuck you want, because your mom did the same when she was young. As if that justifies anything. This whole issue carries zero understanding of nuance. No one bothers to ask why Sage's mom made any of her decisions. Maybe she learned something that changed her view of the world and magic. People are allowed to change their attitudes on things when presented with new information. That is called growing up. We get a completely one-sided view of the events. For all we know, the diverse character is lying by omission. The person being scrutinized isn't even present to explain herself. And that's because the creators are incapable of actually writing people who are dissimilar to themselves. Meaning, intelligent people. Oh and I do get it. Giving an opposing point of view to reflect upon, that would make it harder for the author to hammer in their propaganda. And we cannot have that. Now this is, of course, the show and its agenda factory imbecile brigade revealing their hand with hilarious bravado. Everything old is conservative, and everything conservative is bad, and should be cast aside. Everyone should embrace the new for all eternity, because everything that's new is great. And it's not about this scene alone. There is a through line for this kind of philosophy in the show. Here's an excerpt from that ridiculous Guardian Oath from episode 2. I promise balance. Keep history alive and never be constrained by its relics. I vow to stay curious and engaged. To look at the world with a questioning eye. Cast aside old values. Embrace the new. That is the translated message once you peel away the coding of poetic language. The writers aren't being subtle about this. The way this show tries to fit the different ideals of magic into an allegory for progressive slash conservative values is ridiculous. The scene insidiously paints the situation with Sage's mom as if she was a cool, progressive, liberal, radical chick in her youth. Complete with a nose piercing to make the parody image utterly perfect. She was an ideal person, not because of the things she did, not because she was a good person. That doesn't matter. What matters is that she embraced the progressive agenda and everything that comes with it as far as the writer's worldview is concerned. As long as a person fits a certain aesthetic, and carries the acceptable agenda with blind fervor, everything is hunky-dory. And now, when she is a settled-in mother, with a husband, a child, a steady job presumably, and living an all-around unassuming life, now she has suddenly done something wrong, and is a hypocrite for trying to guide her own child in accordance with the wisdom she has gained from her own mistakes. That is literally what parents are supposed to do. But no! Her choices, her ideals, the truths she has discovered about herself, what makes her happy, all of that is unimportant. What matters is that she is no longer part of the aesthetic and agenda that makes the dykes tingle. Therefore, her decisions deserve to be ridiculed behind her back to her own child. This kind of writing reveals the authors as vile, narrow-minded, self-interested idiots. Lacking even a shred of empathy, they honestly see their worldview and lifestyle as the only correct one, and every other choice ought to be sniped at. No further proof is needed other than the way the elf skank casually badmouths Sage's mom, as if by accident. Your mom is a filthy conservative hypocrite. OMG, did I say that out loud? I totally didn't mean to. What a callous bitch. And speaking of hypocrites, you yourself practice old magic exclusively. Where's your Terrasphere, you conservative cunt? 
You forced the trinket upon Sage. You made the decision for her behind her back. So it's not okay for Sage to uphold tradition or for her mother. Yet it is somehow fine with you. But it's okay because she's a lesbian and a lesbian can never do anything wrong. We should all stuff our faces full of fish hooks, tiddle each other's oysters, live a life of hedonism, free of work, free of responsibility, judge others for choosing a different path, and make up rules that only apply to other people, because that is new, and new is great. What a childish view of the world. And Sage is such a flippant cunt. The first opening she sees that absolves her from all guilt, she accepts it without questioning anything. She never asks what actually happened, why is her mom against new magic, what made her turn against it. She never contacts her so that they might talk things through once and for all. From the beginning, none of this has to do with Sage's relationship to her mother. She never cared about what her mother thinks. She has no respect for her or her wishes. Her experience and wisdom mean nothing to Sage. Like a wimpy child, Sage's only motivation is the fear of getting yelled at for doing something wrong. It's never about what's actually wrong or right. It's all about Sage herself, how she feels, and how she can best justify doing whatever she wants at the moment. Thank you for the Terra Sphere. I like it. I really do. Now she knows she can just throw her mother's criticism back at her face, and thus, she has found peace. Episode by episode, Sage is quickly becoming more and more insufferable. She is honestly a horrible person, equally as selfish as her cotton candy brained partner. But I will save most of my vitriol for later time. A storyline such as this demands that the person who is insecure about their place in the world and their heritage has an actual conversation with the person they are in conflict with. If the author wishes to tell a meaningful story about self-discovery and the chasm between generations within a family, both sides' viewpoints have to be made crystal clear. The audience needs to understand so that we can empathize with the situation. The opposing sides need to interact for more than 15 seconds. But that is only if the author truly cares. Propaganda artists need not bother. <laughs> Come here, you. <laughs> <laughs> Better try a new trick, cause that one's getting old. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone. And I'll see you all in the next one.